The next question really relates to um, the general issue of uh, calculation of zakat. Could you explain to the viewers in um, a nutshell how that is done? There are two methods how zakat can be calculated because zakat is payable when you have it for one year. So you can keep a daily record of what is your wealth above the nisab level. You can keep a weekly record or a monthly record. So then whenever the nisab level is above, then have note down the date. On 1st of January, what was the nisab you had? 2nd of January, what you have? So what you had in the 1st of January, say 1st of January 2007. So 1st of January 2008, it will be liable for zakat. Then what you had on 2nd of January, calculate it, then 3rd of January, or on weekly basis, or on monthly basis. But to keep a record of all this is very difficult. Then you'll be spending half the day in keeping the record, which will be difficult. So it's not practical at all. The easier method and the safe method, where mistake, inshallah, would be avoided, is picking one particular day in the full year and calculate it exactly one year after that. Most of the people prefer Ramadan because it is the month of charity and you get more blessings and more rewards. But Ramadan is not the only month that you have to pick up. You can pick up any day of the year. But it should be calculated according to the Hijri calendar, not according to the solar calendar. So 1st of January 2007, 1st of January 2008 is wrong. It should be 1st Shaban or 1st of Hajj. But since Ramadan is the most pious month, first of Ramadan, you can take any day of Ramadan. If you take first of Ramadan, calculate all the assets that you have. And next year, if it's first of Ramadan, 1420 Hijri, then first of Ramadan, 1421st Hijri, you should see what amount you have. Now, if you calculate only on one day and see exactly one hijriya later, one lunar later. It is the safest method. There can never be any possibility that you will give less zakat. There can be high chances you may give more zakat, but never less. Why? If you keep on calculating daily, then the level keeps on going up and down. But if you calculate one particular day of the year, which day you pick up, and if there happens to be the lowest collection, the lowest saving in the full year, Yet, you are paying the minimum amount of zakat. Say on the first of Ramadan, you have 100,000 rupees as saving, or 100,000 dollars as saving. And that happens to be the lowest saving in the full year. Yet, since it's the lowest, you have to pay zakat on what you possess for one full year. So you have to pay 2,500 rupees or 2,500 dollars on that amount. It's safe. But it may be that it is the highest saving of the full year. So here itself, you may be paying a little bit more zakat, but you won't be paying less. But some people may think, oh, it is a high saving. That means, you know, I may be paying unnecessary more amount. There are chances you may pay more, but there are no chance you'll pay less. Because even if it is the highest, and if you think that you will try and catch the lowest point, the lowest point may keep on changing. It may be in the month of Shaban. It may be in the month of Rajab. It may be in the month of Hajj. And then if you try and catch that point, next year it will again change. So if you try and catch that point, there are high chances you'll pay less zakat. So best is to pick up one point, one day in the full hijri calendar, and keep on taking that every year. And you'll be less assured that you will never pay less zakat. You may pay more. Because if the wealth keeps on fluctuating up and down, you have to pay on what amount you possess for the full year. Yeah. But the lowest point once, maybe Shaban, the other maybe Ramadan, the third may be Hajj, maybe any month. The safest is to pick up anyone, keep on sticking to that year. And inshallah, you'll never pay less. You may pay more. Sometimes 10% more, 20% more, 30% more. It'll never be less, inshallah. So this is the safest method and it's the best method. And on this day, whichever day you pick up, you have to calculate all the savings you have, whether in cash, what is the bank balance, what is the gold you possess, whether in the form of jewelry, whatever stock you possess, whether in shares, whatever investment, all this you put together, or your business, the stock trade of your business, all put together. If you're due to receive some amount from someone, 
even that has to be calculated because he has given a bit late. But yet it's your property. Or if you have given some loan to someone, that has to be calculated. But if you have to give some money to someone, that has to be deducted from your amount. For example, you have taken a loan of hundred thousand dollars or hundred thousand rupees, and a total amount of five hundred thousand rupees that you have in your home, cash in hand, cash in bank, stock everything. So you have to minus from five hundred thousand, hundred thousand. So you have to pay zakat on four hundred thousand. But if you possess five hundred thousand, and you have given loan of two hundred thousand dollars. To somebody else, and you have to receive hundred thousand dollars because the goods you have sold. So five hundred plus two hundred thousand plus hundred thousand, you have to pay zakat on eight hundred thousand dollars. So in all, you have to calculate on one particular day of the year, and then you have to pay zakat two and a half percent on that. I'd like to ask you though, in the case of a person who unfortunately is a little bit miserly, doesn't really want to pay the zakat, therefore. What advice would you give to that particular person? That person is very well off, but due to miserliness, they decide to forego the zakat. What's your advice to that person? There are various verses in the Quran and several ahadith which you can narrate to these people who are miser and don't want to give zakat. In order to encourage them to give zakat, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fajr, chapter number 89, Verse number twenty, and those who love their wealth with excessive love, talking about these people of Maizali. Further, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Adiyat, chapter number hundred, verse number eight, that, and he is violently in love with the wealth. You know those people talking about those who love wealth so much, and are dying for the wealth. So Allah is giving a warning to these people. Allah says in Surah Taqabun. Chapter number sixty-four, verse number fifteen, that your wealth and your children are a trial for you, are a test for you. Allah is telling all these things that you love so much are a test, are a trial for you. And there's a hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number two three three six, where the Blessed Prophet said that every umma would be tested with something, and my umma would be tested by wealth. Wealth is the test for my umma. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Gives an example in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number sixty-eight, verse number seventeen to thirty-three, and Allah narrates the story of a person who owns a beautiful big garden, and this person was very charitable. Whatever earnings he got from the garden, he spent whatever was required on the family, and in maintaining the garden, and the rest, everything used to give in charity. So this continued for a long time. After this person died, his children, they said, that what a fool our father was. He gave everything in charity. So they decided that when whatever harvest they get, whatever goods they get, they will slowly at night take it away to their own homes. The children decided, and no one will come to know. So when the fruits and everything came, they took it to their homes. And next day, when they came to the garden, everything was ruined. And the complete garden was absolutely ruined, and only their garden was affected. And there, the Quran says in Surah Kalam, chapter sixty-eight, verse number thirty-one, and we have transgressed the limit. And Allah says in the next verse, in Surah Kalam, chapter sixty-eight, verse thirty-three, that for these people there is a punishment in this world, and more severe punishment in the hereafter. I mean, those who love the wealth and are miserly people, there is a punishment in this world. In the next world, there is a bigger punishment. So those people who are miserly and don't want to give zakat, actually zakat is for purification, for whatever impurity you have will be washed away, and it's to increase your wealth. As the Prophet said, I said earlier, that charity does not decrease your wealth. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Layl, chapter number ninety-two, verse number eight to eleven, that those people who are miser. And who think that they are self-sufficient, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala makes their path of miserliness smooth for them. But the wealth will not save them, and they will fall headlong into the pit.